I have social anxiety. I know, you think you do too, and maybe you do. Social anxiety is one of those terms that gets thrown around all the time, and a lot of times it's used incorrectly. Not liking social events doesn't mean you have social anxiety. Wanting to go home from events also doesn't mean you have social anxiety. Having fits about how much you don't fit in and how much you hate your face and your voice because they're stupid and you're dumb and you're horrible and that crawling into a hole is the only possible solution for these feelings, that, my friends, is social anxiety. Feeling like you're crawling out of your skin in a social setting for which the only remedy is to leave immediately and tear out your hair extensions, that's social anxiety. This feels like a great time to tell you that you should subscribe to this channel. I talk about these things, other things. There's a little bell icon, and if you click it, you get notifications about all of my videos. Let's get back to talking about social anxiety. I recently went to a friend's wedding, and I was very excited for her. I was excited to celebrate with her and her groom. It was going to be a great night. But the night of the event came, and it very quickly became not a great night. You see, I had to shower, because that's what you do, right? But I kept putting it off and putting it off, and I put off showering for so long that it became literally impossible for me to shower and get to the ceremony, which was set to start on time. That's what the invitation said. Can't be late to those kind of weddings. Nope. So now I had avoided the shower, right? Which I think for those of us with social anxiety, maybe it gives us some sort of protective level of like grime and odor to shield us from the evil gremlins which come out at social events. I don't know, honestly, what it is. Maybe it's about control. I don't know. Whatever it is, it is real. Like the connection that my brain makes between not showering and feeling prepared to go into a social event, that is real. That S is real. So I avoided the shower. Now it was time to get dressed. I'm not going to lie, I knew what I wanted to wear, and I think I had some expectations about how I thought that would look on my body. Well, we all know that expectations are planned disappointments, and yes, folks, I was very disappointed with how that dress looked on me. And guess what? I was extremely disappointed with how the second dress that I tried on looked on me. I think you get the idea. What happened next was that I had this feeling rise up in me that I wanted to throw things and break things, and I felt incredibly angry and hateful and sad. Man friend said very kindly, uh, should we not go? Now, if I had a nickel for every time a boyfriend or ex-husband said to me, do you not want to go? Should we not go? I think it's best that we not go. I would have a million nickels. I pushed through. I stopped sobbing. Oh, did I not mention that I was sobbing? I was crying hard, ugly tears, crying hard. So much of social anxiety for me is about anticipation. So once I actually got to the wedding, I felt a lot more relaxed. Seeing the reality was so much better than what I had imagined in my head. We didn't know anyone there, except for one of the bridesmaids. What I realized was that not knowing anyone was freeing. It was unconscious. It's not like I thought, oh gee, I don't know anyone here, so now I can have a great time. It was more of an organic thing. I, I just, I had fun. We had fun. I got tired at the time that I normally get tired, and I didn't get to see the bride and groom cut the cake. But it was a lovely, wonderful evening. And something about not knowing anyone there clearly opened up something for me and my social anxiety. For that one night, for those four hours, I was the person that I would be if it weren't for my social anxiety. I schmoozed. I answered questions which normally would make me say, uh, excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom, even though I wouldn't have to go to the bathroom. You know, because sometimes you just need a minute to like go into the bathroom and be in a bathroom stall by yourself and rock and plug your ears and make shushing sounds till the feelings go away. So, 
I choose not to take medication for this. I choose to, to live with it and to struggle through it and, and to find new ways that I can feel freer to be myself and to enjoy myself in social situations. And it's working bit by bit. And I don't know about you, but I, I don't wanna take a pill for this. Not yet. This is me, you know, this is me, warts and all. Rocking and plugging the ears and shushing and all, that's me. And while I really envy women who are bold and fierce and strong, my friend the bride is one of them, and I wish I had a tenth of that, there are things about me which make me me. And my social anxiety is one of them. I have a feeling I'm not alone in living with social anxiety. How do you deal with it? Tell me in the comments below. Also, go to groknation.com for more articles about how I live with all of the wonderful mental illness challenges that I have. If you like this video, like it, share it, subscribe. See you next time.